Probably one of the best moments of this episode is when you see the noble just look at the king. The king looks at him. The music starts playing. And in that moment, you expect the king to say, I lost you. But words never came out. The king never said those words. And then all of a sudden, you see Vesta just start crying. His knees hit the floor. And then, the, you know, the king turns around and walks away. The door shuts. It is by far one of the best scenes that this series has given because there's just so much emotion in that scene with barely any dialogue. Just to the character expressions, to the art and animation, to the voice acting, and even the music cue. It just it nailed that scene in just to show what type of person the king is, but also how Vesta felt about his failure. Honestly, Vesta doesn't get any sympathy from me. Like, the man straight up reaped what he sowed. He he asked for everything that happened to him in this episode because, I mean, he had a constant series of lies. He was lying about someone that he worked with, about the dwarf that Rimuru got under his wing in this episode. It just... Vesta... I kind of pity the man, but I don't actually feel bad because, I mean, he deserved it. He really did at the end of the day because the only reason why he got sad and why he started crying was because he got caught. That's the real big reason here. See, Vesta probably wouldn't have showed those emotions. He wouldn't have acted like that if the king did not catch him. He was trying to take the king for a ride, trying to think the king was a fool and didn't notice what he's been doing the entire time. And when the king basically is like, look, I've been waiting all these years for you to just straight up tell me the truth of what really happened, even though he knew he was just waiting for Vesta to tell him the truth. He's like, I've been waiting for a very long time. But obviously you didn't. I lost a very royal, you know, loyal retainer. And, you know, it was like, goodbye. Never show yourself in my sight again. It was an emotional moment for the king. I feel more bad for the king than I do for Vesta. Because Vesta, like I said, you know, he got upset because he was caught. And he thought the king was a fool. And even though he quote-unquote said, like, oh, you know, everything I've done is for the king. I wanted to make the king happy, be useful to the king. Yeah, if you wanted to be useful to the king, you wouldn't have let your own pride, your own, you know, arrogance, your own anger, and your own jealousy to get in the way of making the king happier, to be useful to him. Because, because Vesta really ruined a lot for the king. Let's analyze that. Let's look at the damage report of exactly what Vesta did. So, despite, like, what happened, happened in the past with the dwarf and how, you know, he failed him and he blamed it on the other dude. There's things that happened in this episode and last episode that obviously it just completely ruins any relationship that the king could ever have with the Sly and Rimuru or MC. See, he even shows a potion this episode. He's like 98% like here and all that, like pure potion. He was like, this is a really good potion. That's what the king was showing Vesta. And he's like, you do realize that that slime that you basically drove out of this country that you made very upset, you made it to where we've cut all ties with him. We will never be able to probably have ties with that individual because of what you have done. You basically running the slime out of the country because of your own pride, your own envy is why this has happened. And he's like, you hurt a lot right there. That that hurt us badly. And then on top of that as well, you know, he also sent away one of the best blacksmiths of the entire country. He, he got him exiled. So, Vesta, he really did do a lot of damage to the king. Like, he just straight up ruined a lot of things. He got some of their best blacksmiths gone. A relationship that he could have formed with Rimuru is now gone. And so, I mean, when you really think about this, Vesta just did so much harm in a matter of, like, a few hours than, you know, what actually he did in the past. And, you know, I feel bad for the king because he realizes what he lost, but there's nothing really he really could do about it. I'm willing to bet most likely the anime really couldn't show it properly, but I'm going to assume that there was some form of politics behind the scene and the king was forced to make the decision like he did. Because I've seen a lot of, like, fantasy series and politics with kings and all of that, and it's very clear by the way the nobles are done or how, you know, the king is displayed in this episode that, you know, there is a hierarchy system, and if you are not certain tier on this hierarchy, obviously your opinion doesn't matter. You don't really get a voice to speak whatsoever. I mean, it was even stated within this episode that only the king can speak. You can never speak in the court. The only people that actually can speak freely is the lawyers. And so, technically, it just shows that you technically don't have as many rights as certain higher-ups. And that's the big point here, what this episode is also showing. And I feel like it was hinting at the fact that the king was in a difficult spot. 
he had a bad hand. He had a very bad hand. Because on one hand, he realized that Rimuru, he even says at the end of the episode, Rimuru is a dangerous creature. It reminds him a lot of Veldra, which we know the reason why to that. But basically, you know, he's a dangerous creature. He's like, we need to keep watch of him. And if they would have been able to build a relationship without being run off, like Rimuru being run off, then he would have been able to keep watch and had a casual relationship with the man instead of having like an assassin just watching him from the distance, making sure he's not doing anything. And then on top of that as well, you also have to look at it from the situation that the king, he, with from politics side, he couldn't just straight up not have a punishment thrown to the dwarf. And the reason why is, is because a noble at the end of the day did get hit. Even if he did technically, you know, make his wounds look a lot worse like Vesta did, Vesta still got hit. At the end of the day, law is law. And what, you know, he did to Vesta still should be punished. 20 years to 10 years punishment, I think, is too extreme, obviously. It, it really is. But the point is, is he did break the law. And the king had to have justice because a noble did get hit. And if the king allowed the dwarf to get away like nothing, then it would make his overall position in the country look very weak. Like he couldn't keep control of his civilians. And the nobles, if there's other nobles and stuff that are fighting for power or control of, you know, royalty and stuff, then obviously he's going to make them very upset and they're not going to really trust the king at all. So I feel like it's just a, it's a huge mess. The king was dealt a very crap hand. He really couldn't do much about it. And he was basically forced to exile the dwarf that he thought was a really good friend, that was a really good blacksmith, had to get him gone. And then Vesta had to be gone because he was already doing so much damage. I mean, honestly, I'm surprised the king didn't kill the man. But once again, this probably goes back into politics. See, he had to make it look like Vesta was in the right. Even though he knew that the lawyer was lying, he was bought off, and, you know, what Vesta did was wrong... He, he can't just outright just, like, dismiss Vesta. He can't outright just, you know, throw this man in prison, take the side of a, you know, a peasant, a civilian, because if he did, once again, it would make him look really bad. So, that's the big point here. He had to do it very quietly, behind closed doors, to get rid of Vesta, and that's why Vesta, you know, just basically got handled like he did. He's like, you know, never say, show your face in front of me ever again, and he walked off. So yeah, it's a very powerful episode. I really like the way, you know, Reincarnated as a Slime handles, you know, these certain themes. It's very subtle, but I appreciate that. It's definitely, like I said in my previous episode reviews, it's definitely one of those series that I want to do, uh, you know, reading for. Like, I want to read the manga, or I want to read the light novel, web novel, because this is... It's a good series, and I really, really, really have been enjoying watching this every single week on Monday. It kind of sucks that this series feels so short. Like, I mean, am I the only one that feels like that? Like, when I'm sitting down watching this show, it feels too short to me. I, I honestly was very sad when the episode came to an end. I was like, I want more. I want more. This is just so good. Give me more. But then the credits started playing, and I was like, okay, like, that sucks, but, you know, things happen. Anyways, let's, uh, let's talk about that beginning segment with the elves and all that. So besides the fan service, obviously, I gotta say, I like the little hints or nod at, you know, the girl that apparently is Riamaru's destined loved one. Hmm. I I'm just gonna point something out here. It's very clear that the girl that we saw in the, uh, Crystal Ball was very similar in shape and form to what Rimuru transforms into in the opening and ending song, which that's... What I'm kind of curious about, does that mean that he's either going to, let's say, absorb her, or is he, like, going to just get mimicry to transform her? I'm very curious about that, because it's weird that she's very similar in body shape, hair design, and all that to what Rimuru transforms into in the opening song. So we'll see where that one goes. I did notice that, though, and I'm curious when she's really going to get introduced to me you know, important to the plot. Now, speaking of the plot, the main plot of the story, so there's a couple things that this episode did set up. Number one, once again, my theory on potentially Rimuru creating a kingdom for every single species is seeming to be the case, because, I mean, with the dwarves being exiled and now going Rimuru to the goblin village, it seems like he is going to found his own country, build his own country for all races can coexist. But then we also have another plot to where there is assassins now watching our, you know, MC the Slime, Rimuru, and making sure that he isn't a sinister beast that's going to, you know, kill every single person in the world. So I do like the little build-ups here and there with the main plot. I mean, we have one that's behind the scenes and then one that's obviously taking place, and Rimuru I don't think is even really well aware of it himself. But that's 
pretty much about it. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoy my content, you know, please subscribe. If you like this video, please leave a like. And if you want to get notified for whenever I upload a video, please click the bell icon down below because for some reason, even if you click the subscribe button, you don't always get notified for whenever a video is uploaded. So if you want to get notified for whenever this video is up or any other videos in the future, click that bell icon down below. And this goes for all YouTubers out there, not just me. And with that, I love you guys. Be safe. Chibi out.